want it to the side like this? You good? Oh, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, What's going on, my boy? Uh, man, I can't call it. How are you? Chilling, man. I'm chilling. Well, for those that are watching, you know, on Instagram or on YouTube, this is the Garden State Hip Hop Hour. I'm Romario J. And I got a special guest with me here, Mr. Dre Carter, Philly's hey. own Jersey born and bred. You know what I'm saying? How you doing? Hey. How's everything? Oh, man, everything's everything, bro. I can't complain too much. I actually just got off work by the head to the stew, you know. All right, that's what, hey, hey, get it how you can, you feel me? Stay yeah. hustling, you know what I'm saying? But word, as you can he hear, you know, I'm listening to that new album you got out. You know what I'm saying? Could have been you. Man, I got to hey, tell you, that's the one, for real. That's the Some one. Some fire in there? Uh, nah, there's a lot of fire in there. <laughs> there's a lot of fire in there, for real, for real. Let me... Let me just go ahead and throw you some of my favorite tracks off the joint. You know what I'm saying? Out of time, out of time. That's a good one. You know what I'm saying? Round and round, rocking with that one. You know what I'm saying? Get nasty. I'm I'm fucking with that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> fucking with that one. You know what I'm saying? And of course, pain. Those those four specifically, those been in my playlist joints. You feel me? Those are really good. Damn. So yeah, That's you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, I had to go in, do my little. Do my Googles, as they call it, you know what I'm saying, listening. But um, how, did, how does it feel to have, you know, your album out, you know what I'm saying? How, how's it been? How's it feel? Bruh, it's the best feeling in the world. Before I had dropped, I haven't dropped in almost five years. So oh. it just was a great feeling to be able to drop and to have that support from the label behind me and everything like that. Word. So why, why such a long gap in between? Oh man, <laughs> life. <laughs> Word. Word. So uh, before I had signed to my independent label, Tough Struggle, shout out my pop and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I had signed overseas in London. Okay. And pretty, you know, pretty much pushed the young into the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I had to go through the legal terms and then get everything, everything situated. But yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to hear. So with that being said, like, because you said, you know, you're, I read an article uh, on Yahoo saying that, you know, your father was in the music industry and everything, all that former record producer, CEO and everything. Do you find that, do you want to do it your own way or is it hard to ask Pops for some help? Um, It's a little bit of both. So like, of course we, we bump heads on certain things, but uh, for the most part, I mean, we try to see eye to eye. We try okay. to, uh, you know, he, he kind of lets me be creative and, and go down my own lane and everything like that. So, yeah, for the most part, I mean, we good. You know, he'll, he'll tell me what we need to do, what he sees the goal as, and uh, I just try to execute it, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, with you know, your father being in the music industry and everything, one can assume music's been in your blood since you've been born. You know what I'm saying? So for those that don't know, you were actually born in South Jersey and then went to Philly. So what was the upbringing like in South Jersey and then the transition? Um, it was different, right? So mm -hmm. it was crazy. My, when I lived in South Jersey, I lived in a predominantly Black area. I lived in a predominantly Black school. Um, I actually moved outside of Philly towards like the King of Prussia area. And okay. it was like, uh, it was really a, a predominantly white. I can't even yeah. <laughs> call it anything else, you feel me? So my graduating class actually was only 12 minorities. Wow. So yeah, so it was like, I graduated with a thousand kids. Mm. So out of a thousand kids, it was only 12 of us that was black, white, I mean, black, Chinese, uh, you know, just yeah. minorities. Yeah. So um, in the process of that, though, I'm back and forth to Jersey every day. I'm back and forth in Philly because, you know, that's where the scene is. It's Philly. You got to, you know, even in Jersey, we have to go to Philly yeah. to make shit happen. So all my studio sessions, all my homies, and everything was out Philly. Um, and like I said, I went to a predominantly white school my last year of school. Mm -hmm. So I'm having to travel all this stuff. Back and forth, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of frustrating. Um, and then, you know, being a senior, not being able to graduate with all your homies and everything like that, that was kind of frustrating. But the good part was I got to see a different light 
and different perspectives and realize like, oh shit, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. these white kids be going through some of the same shit niggas in the hood go through. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah, it was dope. I read also that the passing of a childhood friend of yours is what led you to choose music over everything else. Is, is it safe to say that was the concept behind the song Pain? Yeah, so I'm talking a little bit about uh, what's going on and what happened. Uh, I didn't, really, I still haven't really got too in depth on mm -hmm. how he passed and everything yet. But yeah, just just in general, the whole album it could have been you. Uh, that was kind of like the message. Like mm -hmm. I could have been him. You know what I'm saying? I, the girls that are trying to come holler at me now, they could have been you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it was just a different path there. So yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let me go back real quick. What are some of the benefits, you know, because you're on a label, independent label now, you're doing your own thing. What are the benefits of having your father who was, who's been in the game? You know what I'm saying? He's probably had the biggest highs and some of the lowest lows. What are the, the benefits that he brings to the table for you? Uh, I would have to say the biggest benefit, let me see, um, just the knowledge. Um, okay. My my slogan is know that uh, knowledge is power. Just to get to know yourself. Um, mm. So he brings that, you know, what I'm saying to the table. Mm -hmm. my, my father is very educated, and you know, not even just in the music business, but just the life. So mm. to be able to bring me those aspects on music and in life is just a different feeling. A lot of my friends never had a dad. Mm. Facts. I mean, I'm I'm blessed and lucky to have you know my father in my life as well. You know what I'm saying? I think that makes a very big difference, especially in young black men nowadays. You know what I'm saying? It's it'd be hard out here for real. And it's it, you know, it's a blessing yeah, in disguise, you know what I'm saying? Um, with that being said, you know, because I think that's just a very interesting, you know, point in your life. You know, is there pressure coming from him or is there pressure coming from you being that you are his son? Damn, that's a good question. That's a good you know question. Oh, I ain't come to play today, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I see out here making music, good music. Now nah, I got to ask the heavy question. Oh, yeah. Say no more. Say no more. Um, I would say it comes from both. Like, I, I know that's very cliche, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always want the best for myself. And him being my father, of course, he's going to want the best for me as well. So I would have to say it's a little bit of pressure from both fans. Um, I always feel like you're going to be your biggest critic. So I, I would have to say the most pressure comes from me, but okay. for sure. Okay. So now, you know, the album's out and everything. Tell me, go ahead and give me your top three joints that you personally love on the album. Oh, I put them all uh, three first tracks. Three first tracks. I was first three like, tracks? Hey, oh, well then, and for y'all that don't haven't heard it, y'all got to go see what my man's talking about. For yeah, sure, first three tracks definitely. Back. And I had to say, yeah. uh, that's on her featuring Matt Ox. That's definitely one of them. It would definitely be a tie between that and uh, Round and Round for the third one. Okay, okay, yeah, Round and Round's a good one. I, lo I really love that record. Um, okay. musically for you, what has been your biggest challenge so far? Um, promoting, I have such a hard mm. time just being focused and promoting. I really because I have to be on my phone all the time as it is with, you know, writing and trying to stay up to date and stuff. I really try to enjoy those little bit of moments that I don't have to be on my phone. Mm -hmm. But then those little bit of moments are times where I'm supposed to be promoting. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like a give and take type of situation. I, I feel you. Cause you know, I got to do that as well. And for somebody that's like, you know, it's funny growing up, I guess for me, I was a social media person, but as I'm getting older, I'm kind of like, nah, I'm cool off that. But it's like, you kind of need it for your livelihood and your career for what you want to do, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely understand the challenge. And that's actually a good question because not many people would say that, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's a fact. So I understand, you know, for those that don't know, I know that you're not just a musical creative, you know what I'm saying? You have other creative outlets like your clothing brand, mm -hmm. right? So. <laughs> With that being said, is there a bigger picture for your clothing brand or is it just something you're doing on the side to express, you know, your other creative juices and whatnot? Um, well, it had started out just I needed some bread. <laughs> so I That's was just right. like, you know. I was I, to get, go and get it, you feel me? Yes, sir. So 
I was just trying to figure out a way how I could get money and still do music. So, mm-hmm. you know, at, at the time, um, I think it was like 2014, 2013. Okay. Um, I, I was going to a lot of concerts mm-hmm. and I had went to a, a J. Cole concert and he was telling me, you know, get some merch. And so got some merch. Some merch <laughs> ever fact. since then, ever since then, I've just been rocking with the merch. So. Word. So with your new album that's out, do you got any merch for the current album? Like people can do a, like a deluxe thing where like if you get the album, you get like a T-shirt or a hoodie or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're actually working on putting the deluxe album out right now. So, yeah, with the deluxe album, it's definitely going to be some merch coming. We definitely so, going to have some stuff for the fans. Since you told me that there's a deluxe coming, I got to ask how many more records are we getting on that album? It's a tie right now between three and four. I'm okay. kind of like, ah, uh, I want to put more, but then it's uh, just so, you know what I mean? You don't want to oversaturate people. You I, wanna, I feel you. Is that why you're leaning more? Well, I don't want to say leaning more, but is that why you're considering three over four? Yeah. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Are there any? because it's like, I got so much more music already. It's like... Bro, I could probably drop you like four or five more albums right now. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, is it is it uh you know is that coming from you know the label and everything saying yo you only go, you only get like a certain number of checks put out or is that coming from you where you're like nah man personally I'm gonna just give them three more four more. So where is that coming from? Is it coming from you? Is it coming from the label? Well, it's it's always gonna come from me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, my label gives me that creative control to be like, all right, do what you got to do to make sure you're good. Where? With that being said, my mindset is always being a team player. So I'm going to, of course, go to the label. Hey, this is what I think. The label is going to come to me. Hey, this is what I think. We're going to come down to a mutual agreement type deal. Um, At the end of the day, you know. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, whatever comes out, that's what comes out. And regardless, the fans are going to win. So, hey, I'm with it. Um, what is something that you want people or your fans, you know, to take away from this album? Just to listen. Uh, everybody has a story. Mm-hmm. And I just want mine to be heard. And I just want people to really get back to connecting with music on a different level. I know that there's, you know, there's every there's something for everything, right? Mm-hmm. And I just want to be that something that when people put me on, they can connect with whatever emotion they need to connect in. Mm. Do you feel like music isn't as music isn't as isn't used as much for you know emotional outlets as much as they used to be back in the day? Definitely, definitely. There's too many ways to get money from music, so people, you know. Mm-hmm. They, they focus on the bread right now. I agree. Do you okay? So let me ask you this question because you know I be I be I be on the, the social media. You know what I'm saying I will be peeping some topics. Do you feel like there's more people just using the music industry to get bread, get quick out the hood, or you think there's and that there's a lower number of people that actually you know within the music industry that love the music, or do you think like I said people are just using it to get out the hood real quick, make some bread? Um, I definitely don't want to say it's lower love for the music because music is a universal language, you know, Mm -hmm. people are always going to need and love music. I I would definitely more so say it's like the, like how people used to look at the hoop dream, you know what I'm saying? Everybody want to hoop, try to get out the hood. Try to get out the hood. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So where do we see, where do you see Drake Carter three to six years? Oof, I'm trying to touch a couple of M's. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, no, seriously, I'm trying to definitely open a lot of things and open a lot of revenue and avenues for just my people and people coming up in general. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I want to open up a dispensary. Um, okay. know, I want to open up a youth center, just really help kids out and stuff like that. Early. Um, just, you know what I mean? Just take things to a different level, bro. I'm, I'm not trying to do the same thing. I mean, I could go get the bus down and the, the necklace. That's a fact. Take it, it might, yeah. yeah, I mean, it might come. It might come. You know what I'm saying? For now, nah, it will come. You got to speak that into existence. You know what I'm saying? It will come. 
It will yeah, come. That's a fact. But you I know, might and, not want it when it do come. So who knows? Hey, well, <laughs> one thing's for sure. One thing's for certain. You could tell and hear the growth from your music back then to now. That's just a fact. You know what I'm saying? Because I heard low budget Carter. You can hear the difference. You can hear the you can hear the growth. You can hear you can hear it through the music. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, basic training or low budget Carter. Jeez. Oh yeah, I went deep. I did my research. You ain't come to play today. Uh, I'm not here to play with the folks. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, uh, I would have to say basic training. Uh, I, really? You know, I, I was more personal. Now, all right. When, when you ask that, do you mean like which one do I like better, or which one do I feel like was best? Which one? Okay, between the two, which do you feel like? Nah, I really did something with this one. Yeah, I was. I, I'm still going to stick with basic training. Basic training. Right. Yeah, that was like my first. Um, that was my first solo tape that I really like pushed and started seeing people pay attention to what I was doing and pay attention to my music and the lyrics and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I, would, I would definitely say basic training. It had more of a an emotional connection to me. Okay, so what about your album? Uh, okay, so Dre Carter, know that or perception? Because I got I got more questions for you, my G. Ooh. Yeah, we're going through the whole thing. Oh man, uh, hmm. perception, perception, a classic in my hood. Mm. Yeah. How does it feel to know that it's a classic in your hood? I mean, it's a great feeling. I'm yeah. trying to get it a classic in everybody's hood, though. Mm. Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all heard that? I'm going to need y'all to go to SoundCloud, all, all platforms, Dre Carter, listen to everything. Run it up. Run them streams up. You know what I'm saying? DreCarter.com. You can do it all. Just look up Dre Carter. You're going to find me. Uh, in your heart of hearts, you Philly or you Jersey? Yo, it's crazy because everybody has been asking me this question a so, lot lately. So what is like, it? Not even interview-wise. Just personal love. Oh, man. I can't give you that answer. I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. You got it. No, no, fam. I got you here. I need to give these fans an answer. I can't take, I, oh, I can't take no. I can't take I don't know. I need I need a clear-cut answer. Is it Jersey or is it Philly? Regardless, we still going to love you anyway. <laughs> I love, love, love Jersey. That's my first home. Oh, Philly put me in a different, a mm. different bracket. It put me in a different mindset. Mm. I, I gotta go with PA, man. I ah, Jersey gonna kill me for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, yeah. it holds me down. Something crazy. Like I'm not mm-hmm. gonna lie. PA, PA made Jersey want fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Because facts. Okay. I was living in Jersey, they wasn't fucking with me. They wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, it was a lot of beefs. It was a lot of. My music just wasn't there. You know, mm-hmm. I got the PA, started working with different producers, started, you know what okay. I mean? Just putting my mind in different perceptions. Word. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Us Jer- Jerseyans can live with that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. okay I mean, okay. I, I mean you, you got fire anyway, so it's whatever. Yeah, you know, I'm reference to the death. Oh, that's a, that's a fact. So, if Dre Carter could get in the studio with any artist in the game right now, underground, commercial, mainstream, whatever you want to call it. Who, who are the five? All right, better question. You got five people you could collaborate collaborate with on your next project. Any five. You call them, they picking up to give you a verse. Who are you calling? Sheesh. All right, I'm calling Drake. Okay. Baby. Okay. Oh, yeah, Me. I got to listen to this. Me? Okay, facts, Philly. Philly, of course. Let me see. Drake, Baby, Meek. Mm. I'm going to say Fab just because I love Fab. I love Fab, too, yo. Fab don't get no love out here. <laughs> Mad people be disrespecting Fab, and I'm not here for it. Fab is that yeah. bull in my eyes. Facts. Um, and if Tory gets shit together, you know I'm going with Tory Lanez. I wrote the phone okay. All right, I'm I'm rocking with that one. All right, Tory, Fab, Drake, Baby. Now you see, you got Drake and Baby, so I know them features are gonna be crazy. Their features always be crazy. 
Um, let me ask you this. Hmm, how do I want to word this? Because, you know, I, I'm just coming up with shit off the dome. Oh, do you got any other upcoming performances coming up? Um, not right now, because, you mm -hmm. know, just COVID with everything like that. We just right. trying to figure out what's going on, and I take care of my grandma on the side, so. Okay, that's what's up. Respect. Yeah, I ain't trying to really risk too much, but uh, mm -hmm. I definitely want to get into the festivals and stuff like that. So, yeah, oh. we're definitely doing some research. Hey, man. I mean, listen, Sloppy Vinyl be having only John Mads and friends. Holla at your boy, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, holla at me. Let's talk on that. Let's talk oh, that. Say, say that, say that, say that, say that. Wait, I got you. I got you. We're going to yeah. say that later. But um, that's what's up. All right, respect. Respect. With, um, you know, with everything going on, actually, how does COVID affect you? You know what I'm saying? How, what did you learn that year? We was in the lockdown. Cherish everything. Mm. Cherish everything. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I did gain through COVID, I, I lost a lot through COVID. My my brother's mom passed. Mm -hmm. I, I almost lost my grandma in COVID. I almost lost his dad. Um, mm -hmm. Damn, it was yeah, it was just a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, and but it taught me, you know, just cherish those things. And like, Thanks. it was crazy being. 20 feet from somebody who you love and you can't even get into the room. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Especially knowing that this is their last days and stuff like that. So that was yeah. that was kind of like throwing me off. You know what I'm saying? So I would say just cherish everything. Cherish those moments, man. Mm. Do we got any plans for 2022 coming up? Or do we oh, have yeah. plans for the rest of 2021? Both, both. More both. music on the way. More I, visuals. Well, how, um, soon, how soon we end these visuals and music? Respectfully. Well, we just dropped three visuals in the past two months. So, okay. Is going to so, boil up for probably like I'm going to have to go run that up on my man's YouTube page and everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. That's what's up for sure. All right. So, <laughs> that being said, you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely going to hit you because I'm going to need those records on my phone so I can make some yeah, playlists yeah. for sure. Oh, matter of fact, I'm actually going to speak to you about something else as well off camera. But um, what's the what's the end game? You know what I'm saying? I know I know you want to do youth centers and everything, but personally for yourself, you know what I'm saying? What's one of the what's a goal that you want to see get done whenever when your I, success pays off? I just want to be going down as one of the greatest to ever do it. I mean, mm. I just want them to when they bring my name up, just yeah, he one of the greats. They, they can't forget about me. BET Awards or Grammy Awards in, in terms of performance? Which one are you performing at first and why? I mean, I definitely got to perform at Grammys. I got to give me a Grammy. I mm -hmm. got to. Mm -hmm. I got to. That's like, uh, shit, that's the Super Bowl for the hood. <laughs> I got. I actually read something in an article. Not to cut you off. I read something in an article um, on Yahoo. Mm -hmm. It was like you know some people calling him the East Coast Nip. Mm -hmm. You feel about that? That was love. I was trying to actually get with Nip before he passed, so that was mm -hmm. that was love. I fuck with Nip heavy. Mm -hmm. Have you been out in LA recently? You know, in terms for anything music or collabs or anything like that? Mm -hmm. We was just in LA put a camp together a couple months ago. Just a little writing camp. Just had everybody come out. Shot a couple of videos. I shot a video to my song called Drawing Off uh, the Low Budget Carter 2. Okay. Strictly on YouTube. Ooh. So yeah, go check it. I mean, go check that out. Ooh, ooh, okay. Well, of course, you know, it's been good chopping it up with you, my boy. For sure, bro. I'm not actually going to hit you about some of the stuff we could do, you know, outside of Garden State Hip Hop Hour. But, um, Thank you for pulling up. Thank you for giving me your time. You know, thank you for kicking it. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Thank that you. album, it could have been you. I ain't going to hold you for real, though. That's probably one of the best projects I've heard in a little while. I ain't going to front. Sheesh. Good like, luck, man. That means a I don't even be real, like hip hop. I'm an R&B head. You know what I'm saying? So if you got me. Me too. Oh, shit. Me too. Who you me got? Too. Hey, miss, listen, man. Since guy dropped that new album, I'm getting tired of listening to Good Days, bro. Nigga. I'm, I'm I running. I was so hyped when I heard just dropped her album. Uh favorite favorite song off the album. I can't do that. One or through that. twelve is fire. 
Better, better, better uh, question. Is Damage Song of the Year? It's up there. And that's a Jersey representative who wrote it, so. Yeah, you know what's up. You know what I mean? It's up there. Word. Shit, uh, the closer to my dreams flip that he did, which a Jersey nigga chopped the sample up. Mm. Uh, that shit was crazy. So Yeah, for sure. For sure. But like I said, man, it could have been you. Y'all need to go stream that for real. Yeah. SoundCloud, yeah. YouTube, everywhere. For real, for real. Drake Carter, baby. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for pulling up. Thank you for just kicking it with me. You know what I'm wow. saying? Peace of your time. I appreciate you. This is the Garden State Hip Hop Hour with Romario J. My special guest, Drake Carter. Yes, sir. Take it easy, fellas. Know that. <laughs>